Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today is part two of hypothyroid. Listed behind me are seven mechanisms that may create hypothyroid in a patient. So let's go ahead and review, okay? So a patient might come in and they have something called a anterior pituitary hypofunction. Basically, your pituitary gland releases hormones that stimulate the thyroid to produce thyroid hormones. Sometimes there is an underfunctioning mechanism of that hypothyroid, of the pituitary gland, creating hypothyroid. Okay? Number two, autoimmune disease. Patients don't realize that the number one cause for hypothyroid or underfunctioning thyroid here in the United States is an autoimmune disease process called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Number three, nutrient deficiencies. So patients may be nutrient deficient, not having enough raw materials to produce thyroid hormones. Number four, thyroid resistance. So the thyroid is resistant to thyroid stimulating hormone and not producing enough T4 and T3. Under conversion of T4 to T3, what that means is that your inactive hormone that is produced by your thyroid gland is not being converted to the active form of T3. So there's a under conversion. Utilization of active hormone is low because you can't convert inactive T4 to active T3. Over conversion of T3 leading to resistance. Much like insulin resistance, where uh, your cells are, are resistant to insulin for people who have diabetes, your thyroid becomes resistant to thyroid hormones. Increased thyroid binding globulins or thyroid binding proteins, right? So the binding proteins that are circulating, if it increases, it binds to the hormone and doesn't release it, therefore decreasing the actual circulating thyroid hormone. So increase in thyroid binding hormones can create a hypothyroid state, okay? However, the number one cause in the United States is an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So let's go and review uh, in detail what Hashimoto's thyroiditis is, okay? Basically with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you may have a uh, a phenotypic or ge ge genetic predisposition of, um, for autoimmune disease, right? And you have issues with uh, stress and other factors that come into play uh, making this genetic expression, right? So when we look at Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it's up to 90% of people who have underfunctioning thyroid. So the number one cause is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, yet we never check to see if they have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So what are some of the mechanisms? People who have Hashimoto's tend to be gluten intolerant. They have issues with gluten, whether it be uh, neurological signs or GI signs. They have a issue with vitamin D absorption. They might have a receptive polymorphism. So their vitamin D tends to be very low. So vitamin D levels need to be checked on those patients. Excessive iodine. I know there is a community of uh, patients who will take iodine to see if it will help with hypothyroid. And in some cases it will, but the, some cases it will trigger a flare up of autoimmunity and create more problems for that hypothyroid patients who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Another one is heavy metal toxicity. Another one is estrogen surges. So estrogen surges can occur when you go from, let's say, um, pre-pubescent pre, uh, uh, up to puberty, right? So you develop your menstrual cycles around, let's say, between 13 and 15 years old. For some young women, it will create a trigger for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So estrogen surges. Um, also around perimenopause, when women go from menstruating to non-menstruating, it can create different types of hormonal fluctuations and also trigger a autoimmune process. 
pregnancy. Obviously, when you're pregnant, your hormones change. When you give birth, uh, your hormones change. When that happens, it can trigger an autoimmune process, right? So women who have postpartum depression should be checked to see if they have hypothyroid also because their anxiety, depression, uh, fatigue may not be only related to taking care of a young child, but it can be related to a flare-up of their thyroid, uh, which is a autoimmune condition. Another one is infections or GI infections. So a lot of people don't realize they have underlying mechanisms that can trigger an autoimmune process, flare up their immune system and attack their thyroid. So if you have a infection, whether it's GI or a chronic virus like Epstein-Barr, cyclovirus, uh, herpes virus, right? these viruses will trigger an immune response and that immune response will also trigger autoimmune processes in some patients. So infection can create a trigger for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So in order to figure out if we have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, there are two antibodies that are easily performed in the blood work. And it's often missed by your traditional doctors because all they look for is your thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. So they basically look for TSH, maybe a total T4, maybe even a free T4. So they might check for those three and say, huh, those numbers look okay, but we don't know why you're so tired, Mrs. Jones, right? They are missing the boat because 90% of people of hypothyroid actually have an autoimmune disease. So these are the two antibodies that need to be checked if you have or suspect an autoimmune process. So TPO or thyroid peroxidase antibody or TGB or thyroglobulin antibodies. Those are the two antibodies you want to check for hypothyroid, right? So if you're not getting fully uh, vetted, basically, and figuring out, did any of these things happen in my life? Was there excessive stress? Was there pregnancy, hormonal surges, right? There's an infection, right? And then it triggers an autoimmune process, makes you feel tired, you're losing your hair, um, your skin gets very dry, you get constipated, and you don't know why then you need to check for those two antibodies to see if you have it. One of the classic signs and symptoms of Hashimoto's is this, waxing and waning of your symptoms, right? Sometimes you feel very sluggish, sleeping, constipated. Sometimes you may feel very agitated, anxious, um, loose stool, right? You have this fluctuating signs and symptoms of hypothyroid and a little hyperthyroid yet your TSH will start to fluctuate. It'll be on the low side and go to the high side. So this waxing and waning of your symptoms is an indication that you possibly have Hashimoto's thyroiditis because every time your immune system attacks the thyroid, it creates fluctuations of thyroid hormone. So sometimes it can be uh, heightened, sometimes it can be very low, so it can go up and down, right? This waxing and waning of your symptoms is a classic sign that you may have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, okay? So next week, we're gonna go into part three and look at some of the other mechanisms. And my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.